This week on Raising the Curve, we spoke to the youngest, well, we think it's our youngest listener. Long story short, she is four years old. Her mum, Emma, listens to the podcast. And so by association, Olive has been listening to The Curve. And she sent us an email a couple of weeks ago, which honestly we both, I would say separately together on multiple occasions, read and wept to. <laughs> like it was the most beautiful email. And I think just to give context as to why we're speaking to both Emma and Olive, I'm going to read the email out just so that you understand how this all went down. Okay, so the email goes, Vic and Soph, I'm sure you get messages like this all the time, but I just had to message and say thank you. Not for me, though I'm thankful too. This is for my four-year-old daughter, Olive. We had the most unexpected conversation last night as I was tucking her into bed. She asked me to pack her wallet when I got the bags ready to go away for the weekend so that she could spend the money she'd been given from her grandparents. I said, of course, she could spend some, but we'd also save some and we would invest some. There sparked a conversation I never expected to happen and honestly wouldn't have happened if I hadn't found the curve. She asked what investing was, to which I said, it's giving money to a company you believe in so that when it grows and makes money, you get some extra money back called interest. She asked what interest was and we talked about it more. She said she thought that we put her money in the bank, which we do regularly, and it just goes away. I said that when we keep it in the bank, we put it in a savings account, which again is earning her interest. Her eyes sparked up and she said, so my money can make more money? And I was just like, yep, baby girl, that's it. She asked me to teach her more about it and I was proud to tell her that I'd be able to. My conversation with her last night would have been so different without my twice weekly or more dose of the curve, plus your money reset course that I also did recently. I would have just let her spend it all if I'm being totally honest. So thank you from my four-year-old mini investor, she has a wallet and a piggy bank that goes to spending on little girl things she loves, savings for the bigger picture things that she wants or needs, and investing for her future. She's going to have the knowledge to be more financially independent than her mum ever was growing up and into adulthood. Keep doing what you're doing, ladies. You're making a difference, much beyond what you probably think. Many thanks, Emma, Olive's mum. So we read this email and we were just like, oh my goodness do you think Olive would speak to us? So we emailed Emma. Anyway, she's on the podcast. We've got Olive ready to speak to as well. But Emma, just before we speak to Olive and we're going to ask her a few questions, can you just talk us through that email in a bit more detail? Like how did Olive start to be invested in money and investing? How often did she listen to the podcast? We'd love to get a bit more details with, yeah, what actually happened. Okay, so um, we were going away for the weekend to the beach and there's this great toy shop at the beach and Olive asked me to put in, um, she'd recently been given some money um, from my father actually and um, so she had some money in her wallet and she was asking me to make sure that I had packed her wallet into her bag, um, which side note I actually forgot to do. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> classic parenting yeah, yeah, disaster. Yeah. But um, she was asking me to pop her wallet into her bag to take away with her to the beach so that she could spend her money. And I don't know how this conversation spiralled and we just started talking about what we do with money and how we could save some money for for kind of for bigger things she might want to purchase and how we'd invest some money. And I said it very offhand, nonchalantly, if you like. Like I didn't expect her to pick up on it. I didn't expect anything to come from the conversation. And she kind of just got interested and asked a couple of questions. And I was like, holy crap, she's four and she's she kind of gets it a wee bit. And that's when I realized I need to capitalize on this <laughs> and I need to start <laughs> teaching her stuff. Oh, and um, yes. before we chat to you more, Emma, about your relationship with money and what's happened with Olive, do you think, because I know it's her bedtime shortly, can we get her on to just have a quick little chat to her um, and then yeah. we'll come back and talk more <laughs> yeah. about <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We can grab her. <laughs> okay. Now, Olive, has your mummy told you anything about who we are or why we wanted to talk to you today? What did I tell you? I told you that they were mummies. Friends. And you've listened, you've listened to Vic and Sophie in the car on the radio, haven't you? Yeah? Yes. Did you hear them talking? Yeah. We may have had to have changed the channel at some points <laughs> <laughs> <of> their conversations. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Olive. 
Sorry. We'll try and be a little bit more well behaved in the future. Olive, you're my favorite listener. Mm. I'm so happy that you listen. And your mum has told us all about some fun conversations that you've had about money and about investing. And I'd love to know, have you ever seen have you seen money? Have you ever had your own? Yes. How do you get your money? Where does your money come from? Grandpa and grandma and the bank. Ah, I love that. Okay, that's really good to know. And have you ever used your money to buy anything? Do you remember buying anything before? Squishmallows. Squishmallows. What's that? That sounds yum. Do you eat them? No. (laughs) Oh, silly. Can you tell us what they are? They're squishy thingies. Cute. Do you put them in water or do you play with them or cuddle them? Cuddle them. Oh. Oh, so it's a toy. Yeah, it's like a fluffy toy. Cute. Do you remember how much of your money, Olive, you spent on that? Do you know how many dollars it was? Mm, 14. Oh. Wow, that's a lot of dollars. Yeah. Now, Olive, there's lots of things that we'd love to ask you about money and just ask a few things about the things that mummy's taught you or that you might have heard from the podcast. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay, amazing. Okay, Olive, if you could use one word to describe money... What would you use? What's money for? Money's for spending. I love Love that. that. (laughs) That's a great word. And how does it feel when you receive your money from, when you get the money from your grandma and and grandpa? Do you like, do you like getting money from them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with it? When you get money from them, where do you put it? In the bank. In the bank? Sometimes. Where do you put it first? In my money, money box. Ah. Have you got like a little money box that you put your money in? What does it look like? It's a little owly one. Oh, is it close? I'd love to see it. Maybe at Do the you end you could... box? Yeah. I'd love to see. Go get your money box and a squishmallow so you can show <gasps> them. Yes. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Olive, that's so cool. So what's, what's in here, Olive? What's in here? Money. Yeah. Money. And where did you get your money from in here? Who yeah. gave who gave who gave who gave that to you? Mm, nanny and Papa. Nanny and Papa? Yeah. And what what did you do with Nanny and Papa to get this money? We do a treasure hunt. I wanna play. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> Every Tuesday you do a money treasure hunt. I don't know how it started, but it's become a thing that they do a treasure hunt and they all get they get a couple of coins that they bring home and put in their money box. And do grandpa and grandma hide the coins like down the back of the couch or something and then they have to find them? Is that... I don't actually know. Where, yeah. how, where do you find the coins? Um, outside. Outside. Um. So they put them outside like Easter. Olive, I've got a question for you. Do you know what investing is? Um, buying little bits of company. Oh my goodness. Buying a bit of a company. That is exactly what investing is. And do you know what? There is... A lot of people that don't even know that. So the fact that you know that and you're f- only four years old, your mum can be very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens? Why do we want to buy little bits of companies? So our money gets bigger. Exactly. So our money gets bigger. Yes, if you invest in the right companies, then your money gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so by the time you're my age, you'll ha- have lots and lots of money. And you'll be able to buy so many squishmallows, you won't even know what to do with them all. Olive, do you know what you want to be when you grow up? In the Navy. Really? How fascinating. Yeah. Do you know what they do in the Navy? No. Who's in the Navy? Mama. You were in the Navy? No, I am in the Navy. <laughs> Are you? Oh my New gosh, Zealand how Defence cool. Force? Yeah. 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 That's incredible. What does your dad do, Olive? Um, he's a fireman. Very, You've very. some pretty clever parents. Yeah, very courageous parents there. And Olive, in terms of when you see your mum spending money, you know, if she's like paying for something for you or anything like that, do you ever talk about what you're spending? Do you, do you understand how it works? Like, when, you know how we have those cards and we tap them when we're buying something? Do you understand how those work? Do you understand when you when we're at the supermarket, you know how you take mum's card and you tap it on the screen? That's money going into the machine to pay for all of the groceries that we bought. 
You yeah. probably understand it more like when we go and buy toys, usually you take money from your money box and you, where do you put your money after? So you get your money in your money box and we split it up. What do we split it up into? What does the money go into? Spend some, save some and invest some. Good girl, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Wow. And then we get the pile of money that's got the spending pile. And where do we put that money? The bank. No, you put it. Yeah, yeah some of the, the saving stuff goes in the bank. But the stuff that you want to spend when you go to the shop, where do you put it? You put it into your... Wallet. Yeah, so you put it in your wallet. And then when you get to the counter and the lady or man at the counter takes the toy, what do you give them? Money. Yeah, you give them money. And then we can take the toy home because you paid for it. And then what about the other two piles of money? What do we do with those other two piles of money? Where do we take them? Into the bank. That's right. It goes into the bank. And then when, when it goes on mummy's computer, we put some into your savings and we put some into your, what's the other S? Investing. And what do we invest in? Stocks. <gasps> yeah. She's like, Mummy, I want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, she's like, my attention span is gone. <laughs> hey, Olive, can I, can I ask you one more quick question and then you can totally go and rest your eyes because I know it's late for you. If you had all the money that you could ever want, so you had lots of money in your wallet, what do you think you would want to do with that money? Um, what would you buy? Squishmallow. <laughs> <laughs> this is not endorsed by Amazing. Squishmallows, I promise. <laughs> hey, Olive, thank you so much for staying up past your bedtime. I know it's late for you. What do you say? You want to say bye? Bye. Oh, bye, Olive. Thank you so much. Bye. bye. We'll try to be not so naughty on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh. she is absolutely oh. adorable. I sometimes don't know how mothers do anything but just like sit and look at their kids and just want to squeeze them all day and, and hug them. And I think that's why people put so yeah. many photos on like social media because they're just like yeah. obsessed with them, you know, and fair 100%. enough, they're bloody adorable. Yeah. Emma, can we chat to you? I know Olive's now gone to bed, but I'd love to talk to you more about your relationship with money and how you found the curve and mm. how, what it's been like having these conversations with Olive so young, which I imagine is probably quite different to, to your childhood and, and how you grew up learning about money. And so I'd love to hear for you, like uh, before having kids and, and as you grew up, what your relationship with money was like and how, I guess over the last few years, probably that started to change a bit as you've learned more about money and investing. Yeah, absolutely. I think that pre-kids, I didn't really realise how much of a disposable income that I have had, and I definitely treated it as disposable. Growing up, like I had a um, what you'd call a privileged upbringing, I guess. Like we, I never wanted for anything, um, but money was definitely never talked about. Um, both my parents worked really hard and still do, and so I guess I experienced money by if you work hard, you get money, you spend money, and you sustain your lifestyle. Like there wasn't a future focus um, that that I experienced anyway, or have talked to my parents about. And um, so I'd never really thought actually about my first money memories until I um, did your money, your reset course and that activity at, to prompt you to kind of think about how what you do now is impacted by what's happened to you in the past around money. And so um, that was really interesting for me because I think I have a lot of guilt around spending money on myself or actually just spending money full stop. Like I really weigh up the options, which is great in that it's made me quite a good saver. Mm. But it also, I think it has its origins and kind of mum and I would go shopping and it would always be like, oh, don't tell your dad what we've bought kind of thing. Or the packages would arrive and you'd sort of shuffle them in the door and pretend like you've owned them for ages. And I think it was probably reflective of the time, like mum always had her own money. It wasn't like she needed to hide anything from dad, but it was just, I guess, not the done thing to kind of be happy and proud of what you'd purchased. I didn't realise that you'd done the money reset course. Course, by the way mm. how crazy is that like first uh, reflecting on your own money stories and money memories I was really confronted by what I found out like and you totally don't need to share anything if you don't feel comfortable but well what were some of the things that that did come up for you 
I mean, like I'll, I'm going to start just to hopefully like break the ice, but mm. like my first money memory was stealing. Like I stole from a fairy shop when I was five and I was like, my, my mum was like, what's in your party bag? And I was like, nothing. And then I got fully found out and had to take it back. And it was so confronting for me starting to realize that stuff, but also very healing and then changed the way that I now think about and relate to money. Was Did anything come up for you when you were doing some of the earlier modules in the course reflecting on your own experiences? Yeah, I think definitely there was a fear around losing money and a fear around spending money. Mm. So um, one one thing that I was reflecting on uh, when I was asked a question, and I hadn't come up for years, like I hadn't thought about this for years and years, but I remember, I don't know if you guys ever did the 40-hour famine and you, you know, eat barley sugars for 40 yeah, hours yes. and raise money. For World Vision, um, which is still, I think, going strong. And you eat heaps before yeah. you go in, yeah. yes. which is the worst idea ever. Like yeah. we used to have parties where we'd have people come over and like eat a whole lot of food before you go to famine. It's like, that's the worst idea ever. Bizarre. Honestly. I think now yeah. they just do like a social media break for 40 hours, which is probably more painful. But, um, yeah. but for me, I remember uh, collecting all the money from friends and family and I lost some or it didn't balance. And we had this little checkbook kind of thing oh where you wrote, wrote how much money you'd, you'd mm. got from your friends and family to take in. And it didn't add up. And I remember just being distraught that I'd lost money. And um, my parents were kind of giving me the third degree a bit about where this money had gone. And I wasn't like, I wasn't a kid that lost stuff. So, or I'd done the addition wrongs. It just, it wasn't adding up. And I was just terrified of not having this money that Mm. I'd promised to give Mm. over. Um, And so, yeah, it was definitely like a fear, if that makes sense. And then just a, a fear around spending money in terms of, the the guilt and like ha- having to kind of hide purchases I guess just copying mum when she'd use her credit card and then mm. say oh well, don't tell dad kind of thing I think she's probably joking but I just yeah it's so interesting like I we, like we were just saying about how your the more you earn the more you can spend kind of thing like that was also like a memory like in yeah. your household I think I like on reflection just as you were saying that I was like I reckon it's the same in my household like I had two working parents and it was very much a case of you worked to afford things to buy things to spend and like yes there was this investing and saving for a rainy day but it was the more mentality was like the harder you worked the better your pay or salary or job the better lifestyle you could have which is inherently correct in a sense but and then I think my earliest memory was I was cutting mum's rosemary bush to go down to Mission Bay to sell rosemary so I was being resourceful and I was like if I want my own money and I want my own lifestyle I'm gonna have to make my own money and so even to this day I remember when I quit my job to start the cure my parents were absolutely shocked they're like you've got a good job you've worked your way up why on earth are you now leaving? Like it was just, I think it's that old school mentality of like, if you can be resourceful, use your skills to get better and better and better, you'll have more money. And then the afterthought is- But it's is, also is to not be risky. Sign. Yeah, yeah uh, but, but it's also like the, the yeah. thing, and I think that, you yeah. know, like I remember when I wanted to leave my job in Sydney and I was earning really good money and I was wanting to go traveling and I stupidly, I don't know honestly what, I mean, I adore my grandma, but I don't know why I called her to talk to her about it. I think I just missed her. <laughs> and I called her and she was like, oh, absolutely not. No, oh, why would you do that? No, mm. Sophie, that's a terrible, and, I, and it spiraled me as you can imagine, because obviously you really admire your parents and your grandparents, but I totally agree with you Vic and Mm. also Emma I think there's this like generational fear and I don't know maybe it's like come down from the war as well and like having to ration and not having enough and there's maybe elements of of the depression and things like that from our grandparents that have like trickled down and from generation to generation it's quite fear-based and so when you then start to look at that it's yeah, it's kind of scary to think how mm. it's such learnt behaviour and then when it comes down to parenting Olive to try and not make her feel more fearful. So, like, you know, if she was to lose money or something like that happens, it's just thinking about, like, okay, how can I not instill more more fear into her around this? Or And I, I can't even imagine what kind of a minefield that must be as a parent. But, yeah, like, do you, do you notice yourself... I guess after you reflected from the money reset on things that you and yourself 
grew up believing about money. Have you tried to almost like rectify or do that differently with Olive? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think that I uh, try and kind of, with the language that I use Mm. around money, try and be quite purposeful with it. And, um, you know, it's it's always a quick answer when kids say that they want something because they always want something to say, no, it's too much money or no, we can't afford that. Rather trying to say that's not our priority or we're Mm. not prioritising our spend on that right now or we went shopping last weekend. Why don't we go to the park and go to the pools this weekend instead? Because it was boring to shop all the time. Mm. So it's kind of... um, I love that. Making sure that the language that I use is not um, crucifying money. Like it's a really, it's a useful thing. It's a Mm. means to an end and it's a source of fun and enjoyment. Yeah, love that. They can be proud and happy of the stuff that they've bought. Um, We had an interesting situation the other day with Olive where she bought a toy with. um, Wait, let me guess. Let me guess. What kind of. Was it a squishmallow? (laughs) It wasn't a squishmallow. It wasn't a squishmallow. It was this toaster that you push down the toaster and the um and it was some Zuru contraption and the the toy pops out the top. Um but it, it had a really strong smell. It was like a baked cookie thing. Um but she she regretted purchasing it and I'd never seen her do that before. What did she say? She just said, I don't I don't want this anymore. Can we take it back? And that sort of started a whole conversation around how money is finite. So I don't think she understood yeah. and this was where it clicked for her that once you've given over your money and you've got something in return, your money's gone unless you're yes. putting it into something yeah. that makes your money grow. And um, mm. so she was kind of like, okay, so we don't take it back. And I said, well, you can give it away if you don't want it anymore. We mm. can give it to a friend or give it away. And she was like, oh, maybe we'll just put it on the shelf for now and I'll think about it. So, yeah, Honestly, she definitely. hats off to you for even like explaining that and not just like, and I, I get it. Like a lot of parents are very time poor and you know, don't have the time to explain things or a stress or whatever the situation is. And so they kind of dismiss those conversations, but little do they know those, even just the tiniest little bit of an explanation to her of like money is finite that will stick to, with her forever and she will now learn you know like they pick up the smallest things and it's so funny because Soph and I had dinner last night and we were talking about how how parents have started to talk to kids like adults you know it's not yeah. like no you're yeah. not allowed yeah. it's like no we can't do that because or let me explain why that kind of thing it's like no you can't return this because money is finite it's not like no you should have made a better decision you know it's kind of you're talking yeah. to kids and you're trying to Treat them like adults. And even if they pick up only 1% of what you're explaining, like at least it's something. And so I think it's so important. And now next time she buys something, she'll be like, do I actually really want this? Otherwise it's going to sit on the shelf and I won't be able to get that money back. And yeah, I think congrats to you for even having those conversations. Mm. Because a lot of parents will also think (laughs) my kids are too young to understand and if there's anything I've learned from my niece and nephew, they pick up way more than you realise. Absolutely. Money related yeah, or no. not. <laughs> <laughs> and they have memories like elephants. Like they remember yep. everything and every detail. And I noticed the difference between Olive and her brother. There's 14 months between them. And he had a right tantrum the other weekend because we did the thing that we do and we split up, literally split up their money into three piles. And then we go and spend one of the piles, you know, every so often. Um, or when there's something they really want. And um, he did not understand the concept of not having it all. Like he wanted every one of those coins to be able to spend on Hot Wheels. That was totally his drive. But Olive had no issue. She was just like, nope, that's what we do. Like it was second nature to her because Mm, we'd done it. That's so interesting. Mm. Yeah. Do you think that's because she's a year older? Or do you think and it's... you've done it for her for longer, right? I think right? it's repetition. Would have been about. Like it's um, just yeah. being consistent yeah. with it. and But every day is different. Like the next time we do it might mm. be something completely different. But I guess it's trying... For me, it's just trying to keep it super simple. Like I can't... I, I don't know enough to make it complicated. And she she yeah. doesn't want it to be complicated. So for mm. our family, that's the only thing that we've we've come up with so far. And I'm no expert, so we're just trial and error over here. Do you think that your money habits or your relationship or conversation that you have with money has changed because you've got children and you're very aware 
of how that narrative, like you were saying before with, with your mother and she would hide the purchases. And like, are you way more conscious now in terms of your spending, your saving, your investing because yeah, you've got children? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm way more conscious of everything <laughs> since having kids. Yeah. It's like having a little shadow around, um, watching your every move. And it doesn't matter what you say, it's what you do that they that mm. they're gonna take away. So mm. yeah, I mean, um and, and honestly before and before listening to you guys, I would have just let her spend it all. Like this is not this does not come natural to me, this concept of um not spending the money that you have. I've always saved a wee bit, certainly never invested. And um it just wouldn't I it wouldn't have even clicked in my brain to have that conversation with her. So I'm um, mm. I mean, my kids are not gonna grow up with um trust funds. So the best that I can give them is some financial literacy to to take forward. Um, really, which is oh my hope. god! I feel like really um, quite emotional. Like the fact that you, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's been many people that like you've listened to and learned from and stuff. But like to hear that Olive's life and the way she grows up and relates to money will be so much more positive mm. than what I had. And I think having to reverse that, uh, all three of us. I mean, particularly probably Emma and I. Maybe not so much Vic, but like. The, the amount of work that it takes to get to like 30 or however old you are to start to like understand your money stories, understand your spending mm. habits is so much harder to turn around than if you start a certain way. And to think that Olive's life and the way she relates to money and, and probably like how much she'll have and the things she'll be able to do is coming back to the fact that you're now able to teach her that because of like listening to the curve and I'm sure lots of other amazing um, platforms that you engage with, but like, that's pretty incredible. Mm, that's incredible for you guys as well. You should be proud of that because uh, like literally I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I'm on your podcast. Like you should be proud of that because you have played a massive part in the way that I view money and that I can teach her about. And when, when you, yeah, you always talk about time in the market, Vic, and that resonated with me for her because I thought, well, holy heck, mm. she's going to have a hell of a lot of time in the market if I can get her in now. So um, I, I, that made investing for me is more important for her than it is for me, which is a little bit weird. I guess it's a parenty thing where you, you want them to be better than you. Mm. And so I just kind of think, well, it, if she gets a head start, imagine where she could be. And if it can increase options mm. for her, that's that's all I can hope for. If she doesn't have to do a certain job that she doesn't want to do because she she sees another way, then that's pl it's pretty awesome. I think your Shit, cool. your kids are going to be way more rich from the knowledge you've given them than any trust fund child. I swear, <laughs> like honestly, <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. Um. It's like that whole leader. Why does it lead a horse to water? No, teach it. Give a give someone a. Oh, okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> give, it's a, it's give them like give a fisherman. Yes, give, give a fisherman a, a rod, hungry person a or rod something. or something yeah. rather than a fish. Yeah. It's like rather than giving her a trust fund, you're giving her all Knowledge. of the tools to actually yeah. create her own little trust yeah. fund. Do mm. you um do you and your partner talk about money a lot or like you know since you've done a bit of work on your own like money stories and understanding your, your spending habits. Did you do that together or did you share it with him? Like, uh, I or, think like how, how did that all play it's out? It's definitely been my own journey. Um, and not that he's not interested. He just probably isn't as interested as I am. He's more than like, he's more, uh, more than happy for me to sort the family finances. I guess we, um, we have definitely, a. 50-50 relationship and everything and always have. We've been all in right from the get-go. And he is as much a, a parent and a partner as as I am. But I definitely pay more attention to the finances than he does, uh, which uh, which I'm happy with. But um, but yeah, it's it's been Has it always been like that? Yeah, I would say so. I think we both have a similar mindset around... Um, I don't know, it's not an abundance mindset, but more of a there'll always be enough, like something will, I don't know where it mm. comes from, but it'll be okay. That's so lovely. And I don't... I, oh, I wish I had that. <laughs> and, I, and I don't... And I, I'm so doomsday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, not quite doomsday. And we've had loads of stuff happen that has been um, life-alteringly changing your financial situation. So it, it doesn't necessarily mm. always be okay, but it kind of comes out in the wash. And if you've got a, a team attitude on it, then that's really helpful. 
but in terms mm. of learning about investing classic difference between the two of us so Greg's foray into investing is to jump on sharesies with his mates and have a competition to see who can invest in the right companies and just completely stock picking and just making it up on the fly doing terribly buying and selling trying to just you know so interesting I think like, Greg will listen to this and be like yeah. Emma that's not true I make really <laughs> clever decisions. decisions and I'm like no 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 no. I'm gonna go back to the start of the curve diligently listen to every one of their podcasts and um, be really boring and dollar cost average in ETFs like it's just a completely oh, different boring approach. is great Right. We love boring. But I, I think mean, that's a real feminine approach yeah. as well. Like Definitely. I'm this yeah. I every time I meet someone that's like, oh, I want to learn about investing, I'm like, look, this is gonna sound very self-promo-y, but like I knew nothing. Like, go back to the beginning of our podcast. And if anyone's listening and you're new and you're feeling still a little bit like yeah, oh, I don't really have the basics, like I would say the first like 50 episodes are basics you mm. know and and for me like that was the only way that I could get to a place where I had the confidence to even like into the conversation or start to mm. invest and yeah. and not all women or all men would invest or learn in the same way but what I've noticed from our community mm. definitely is the more that you learn the more confident you are and it's not just like chuck you know, as yeah. Vic would say, darts at a dartboard kind of situation. It's like, no, no, I want to know how I can get the bullseye. Yeah, mm. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's like really consistent for feminine learning. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm intrigued to know what was going on in your life at the point when you were like, I need to learn about this. And at, how did you find the curve? You know, like, can you just talk us through that, that journey? <sighs> um, so I think I found you guys in 2022. And mm -hmm. I had just had uh, my third baby and I was back at work. Hold on. How many babies do you have? So um, our first baby, Walter, passed away just before he turned two. And then oh, we had I'm Olive sorry, and, sorry, and then we had Arthur. So, um, I, so th that's what I mean. Like I've been out of the job market three times, three lots of maternity leave wreaks mm. havoc on your career and havoc on your finances. Mm -hmm. Couple that with a husband who has made multiple different career decisions. So between us, we've been kind of on and off one income for sort of seven or eight years. Um, so we've mm. had sort of varying degrees of success. So I'm definitely a proponent of your emergency fund idea. I didn't have one back when I needed one. So we've got one now. Um, but Love yeah, that. so I found you guys in 2022 and I think I, I feel like I was listening to a Move It Mama podcast and, oh, yeah. um, and Jess must have talked about you guys and whatever she oh, said. Oh, they're so lovely. Remember we spoke to them, Vic? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It's a long That's time so ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I heard that and I thought, oh, I, these, these girls are quite interesting. I could, I could tune into this <laughs> and I'd never really been into podcasts before, to be honest. Um, I'm a little bit slow with technological advancement, um, but I tried you guys out, tested the waters and it, I don't know, it's... I hated yeah. you and then I left. <laughs> that yeah. I took a break. Um, no, no, no. I, <laughs> I thought, no, this is pretty interesting. And just the, your approach in terms of being super easy to listen to and finding out as much about you guys. I'm somewhat living vicariously through you. You were doing some really exciting stuff. And I guess I was at home in between working full time and having babies. Um, so that was pretty mm. cool. But uh, I think you said in some of those podcasts, like, if you want to learn more, or you kept referring back to previous episodes. And so I thought, right, I'm going to do this from the beginning. So I remember going for walks mm. around um, Trentham Military Camp in Wellington. And um, I'd be listening to you guys on podcast. And then I downloaded a bunch. I went to see in 2022 for about, I don't know, a month or so. And I downloaded a bunch of your podcasts and I would lie in my, in my pit at night and listen to you guys. And it was nice because it was like having your friends um, ha just have a yarn. Oh my God, this is so... <laughs> So cool, Emma. Yeah, so that was, I mean, it's so weird and boring, but yeah. No, it's not weird and boring at all. It's <laughs> honestly like, I, I can't believe we haven't, yeah, I can't believe we haven't done this sooner. Like speaking to people from the community and like hearing their stories, I think, oh my God, lol, I'm like, having a cry. <laughs> Bless you. I'm just like, no, it's true. Like, it's it's like we get messages all the time and it's lovely and we love receiving them, like emails, DMs, you know, all of that. But actually like hearing it from, someone and like how yeah I don't know it's just like we've just started this jumping into a room talking shit and like the fact that 
someone like no, yourself has listened and like actually implemented what we say also kind of scary but um <laughs> yeah, like, be what but, you well, yeah, yeah yeah it's um but it's like incredible and it just like it kind of breaks my heart that there's people out there that are probably still like you were or you know even worse off that just have have no idea or no we no idea where to go and yeah it's just yeah no it's, but also I think congrats to you because it is so a lot of people say they want to change their financial future and they want to make a difference and they know that they don't know this stuff but they don't do anything about it and I think the fact that you actually put aside the time and learnt and now your kids are going to have a better life and like oh it's just like oh yeah because I actually (laughs) think it's quite easy to it's easy to say like I want to be fit or I want to do this or I want to whatever but like yeah you're right Vic you really do have to put in the mahi like it's Mm. not it's 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 it it takes a while and I and I think that if I hadn't been forced to sit in a room and listen to Vic (laughs) You wouldn't have done I it mean, like I, yeah. Well, I don't know. I just think that there's such a commitment that comes and it's it's every day as well. It's not just like a once off like and you're done. Mm. It's a constant learning and like it's like a new skill. Like self-awareness. Yeah. It's like a new Definitely muscle. Is. It's like anything takes time to get good at and it's like what we're trying to do is make it interesting and make it fun and not boring so you don't give up so that you do put in the effort and the commitment because you want to and because you can see the, the the light at the end of the tunnel you can see the reward you know it's like that's what we want people are we to all notice. crying because <laughs> you just no. wiped your eyes sorry I was I like is this a little, little, little bit of dust yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, I, I'm not this is a bit of dust I, I just think that um if you can also like just getting a shit in one sock like was a big part of it because I knew <laughs> what I sort of knew what was coming in and what was going out for both of us. And um, my husband and I have always had joint finances, for better or worse. There's no prenup. We didn't do any of that stuff, sorry. Mm. Um, Things come in, things go out. But I wasn't across it enough as I needed to be Mm. because this is important stuff. Mm. And um, so kind of just taking a moment to reflect, look back. I'm not the best budgeter, but looking back, budgeting is all right. It's a bit like writing a food diary kind of thing. I just, that's not me, but I can look back it's and It's being reflect. conscious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's being able to see where the money's going and coming from, and just being, making more conscious decisions. I think when it's coming in and out and you have no idea what you're spending it on, where it's going or coming, it's yeah. like there's no control. And I think taking back that control and having oversight – uh, and yeah, the ability absolutely. to change the direction is is definitely is definitely key if you want to get it. And sorting out all those little things like insurances mm, and, yeah. and money that you just, yeah. over time, especially when you have loads of disposable income pre-kids, you sign up to all this mm. stuff and then you realise, I'm not using it. Why do I still do that? Why am I still insured like yeah. this? Why am I purchasing that? Like it doesn't feature in what I want a, my life to look like. And so having time to just kind of look at that and change it up. Yeah, and I guess for you, Emma, I'd love to know, like as you came, you know, with first having... Um, like your first baby, was finances at that time something you thought about? Yeah. Did, did yeah. it dictate decisions or anything or was it kind yeah, of? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, just a plug for parenting, by the way, you, you'll you never have enough money. Your car will never be big enough. Your house will never be big enough or have enough bathrooms. Sometimes you just got to take mm. a little bit of a leap. I love that. But That's so that, true. <laughs> it's like you always. you make it work. Yeah, we're you make so it work. resilient, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Where was I when I first had a baby? I think the the thing that dictated for me being a working parent was looking at how long I had for maternity leave Mm. and that there was a real undertone or driver to get back to work to keep earning money to kind of fund the lifestyle. Can you talk a little bit about what it is to be in the Navy? I don't even know. Uh, So I'm a logistics officer in the Navy. When I'm at sea, I don't drive the ship or fix the engine I just do all the other stuff and make sure that the ship's got everything that it needs and the people have everything that it needs to get from A to B and then when I'm ashore I do all kinds of jobs at the moment I'm a career manager for a couple of hundred people um so yeah super varied but did you feel the pressure to get back to work because there's you know like scarcity of jobs or like how did that play out so well I think it played out in a number of ways so at the time we were living in a navy house so I don't know if you know about military kind of housing so at at that time we had some subsidized housing through the navy it wasn't 
it wasn't super cheap, but it was cheaper than market rent, if you like. So I was, um, so we were in a Navy house. And so that kind of dictated a little bit in terms of getting back back into work, if you like. But I mean, we have a standard kind of 12 months off maternity leave, but that's that's unpaid apart from what the government gives you. So you know you're going to take a, a big hit uh, to your salary, to your savings, to your investments over that time. And um, I mean, hats off to people who are doing that without a partner. Like I was lucky my oh, husband at the time I was can't teaching. Even imagine. But I can't, yeah, I can't even, well, I can't imagine, um, like I've been solo parenting for the last three months and And because I've always been the one to go away. Um, Mm. So my kids are used to not having me kind of every second week for a few days and I might go away for a few weeks at a time. Um, But I've never not had my husband, which is, I know, really different to the usual kind of way it plays out in a man-woman household. But um, my kids had never had, they'd had one night away from my husband um, until the last three months. But learning over the last three months what solo parenting is like, like, hey, off because I don't know how how it happens and fiscally I don't that's hard really Mm. really hard some real big sacrifices and priorities have to be made for us I just knew that I, I knew I wanted to go back to work firstly I think that was important to me to have that sense of achievement and drive but also financially I was super aware that I had to go back to work it wasn't really a choice Mm, what well, yeah. was it not really a choice it really it wasn't a choice mm. so um at the end of the day it is what it is and um and you make it work but that definitely the whole time I was on maternity leave you're kind of thinking about the fact that you have to go back to work and how are we going to make this work yeah can I ask I, I, this is like not something I had planned or have written down but like can I ask a couple of questions I'd love to know what was the time in your life where you had a fuck moment with your money like was there a time where you were like whoa oh my god how are we gonna do this yeah there's been two a trivial one when I was 19 and um doing my OE I was in Europe on Kentucky needed to do a skydive because you have to do a skydive it's a once in a lifetime opportunity completely cleared my funds and made a call back to my parents I just remember telling them this is a once in a lifetime opportunity you have to fund this adventure for me um so that was nice because I had a safety net or someone to ring and wire through some money but I think probably um a more on a more serious note I think when we realised that, so our our first son was really ill, um, really sick when he was about a year old, and I think when we realised that one of us needed to quit their job to take care of him, that was a real aha moment. Mm. And and challenging for me as a mum, realising that at that point, I was the breadwinner, so it made sense for me to keep working. And um, so my husband quit his job and became the carer for our son. So that was probably, I remember sitting bolt upright in bed one night and just coming to the realisation that we can't both work, but how are we going to make this work? Yeah. And um, that was really just a leap of faith, fly by the seat of your pants, if I'm honest. I don't think that we were financially prepared for that scenario. I don't know that you can be. Mm. Um, but, and just through the help of family and friends, I guess we got there. And I think it just shows, like, I mean, I, I'm speaking for you, but like now on reflection, you must look back and go, Uh, you know there's that sense of like everything always works out okay in terms of like financially you know like all those moments and honestly when you said the skydiving mine pretty much was exactly the same the trivial one (laughs) and then I was I remember I was in um, Brazil doing like a two-month holiday with a friend and it was the last couple of weeks and I'd run out of money and I called my sister and I was like everyone was going it's not skydiving but the gliding gliding yeah 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 um, oh yes yes yeah and I was like I can't afford it I've run out of money I've got another two weeks and she was like just call mum and dad and ask them for money I was like because she's just that that's her way of you know yeah and I I was like I can't I cannot ask yeah, mum and dad yeah, and, and have the guilt yeah. of them knowing I didn't budget right and I didn't do this and they'll be like why did you run out of money and honestly I called them and they were like of course they're like you're in South America like there's no way we wouldn't lend you money you know it's not the safest 
yeah, continent. Yeah. And so there was this, but, but like you said, a very, very, very privileged to be able to have that safety net. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, and then the other one for me, I'm, I'm intrigued to know what yours is, Soph, as well. But the other one for me was when during COVID and I was employed uh, and we got this phone mm. call and we were all trying to work from home and I didn't know what was going on in the world. Like, I was away from my family. Like it was just like, yeah. And I remember my boss being like, if you get a call tomorrow, you don't have your job anymore. And I went in a head spin. I was like, I have a mortgage. Like, yes, I had an emergency fund, but I was like, I have a mortgage. I have like these plans. I have, and I was just like, I don't even know like what, what the world's going to look like. Am I going to be able to get another job? And I just completely spiraled. And I think on reflection from both the trivial and the non-trivial is that everything works out okay. And it's like, if mm. you're, you're stronger than you realize, you're more resourceful than you realize. And I think it comes back to having that kind of abundance mindset and being like, everything will be okay. And eventually you attract that energy, I think is. Yeah, I guess I like agree. mine's kind of different. I must say, I sort of disagree in the sense that like, if you're someone who has had a shit load of times like that mm. in terms of uh, honestly, like I could write a book about the amount of times that I have had like the most stressful money situations. Mm. Like it makes me actually feel really sad for my younger self because I, yes, I've always figured it out. But the amount of stress and anxiety mm. that I have had to endure over the years because I haven't had the tools or the knowledge of how to have backstops to, to prevent that from happening is like really sad actually. And, you know, I, I know that I am like fucking resilient with everything. Mm. I know I'll be able to sort it out, but I also would not wish that stress on like my worst enemy. And I yeah. think that there's, mm. there's like something to be said for, um, and I don't know if like both, I mean, Vic, you're very lucky to have had this education a lot earlier. Emma, I don't know if in the last like five years, maybe this has changed for you, but I, the way that I now view the backstops I put in place, whether it's an FU fund or an emergency fund or investing, like that is like self-love for me, you know, mm. like that's, I'm, I'm looking after myself. And I think that the times it's taken away the whole, oh, I don't want to like put money aside because I want to use it now because because I felt that extreme stress around mm. money like I've had to hop from house to house like trying to avoid paying rent I've like like the the amount of times that I've been um like genu I mean I I actually went on the government support at one point when I came back to New Zealand during COVID because there was no jobs I didn't want to get a job it was like lockdown I was like living in an apartment by myself like that's a pretty scary and actually also I felt really embarrassed mm. though, to have to like go on a scene like what the doll you know but I was like I'd come back from traveling I didn't have a job I didn't know what the future was like it was so scary yeah. and I didn't have backups and I didn't have emergency mm. funds and mm. so I think that it's just such a privilege to have the knowledge Definitely. to be able to look after yourself and it doesn't mean I don't still have fucked up times where I'm like how am I doing this but it, it just and means we probably that, like, all though, will have more fucked up times yeah, going forward yeah, but I, yeah I, for sure. what I, yeah. I just don't want I don't want it to be like one of those yeah I think what I mean is it's like it's also shouldn't be normalized to feel that stressed about money is what I mean mm, yeah. is that you can avoid yeah. it like mm. yes these things are unavoidable but also like by doing what you've done, Emma, and like really put the time and energy into learning about how you can look after yourself more so mm. that those times that you're like, oh, how are we going to do this, are less turbulent. Yeah. Is yeah. Like and such I reckon a this is, it's, it's also comes down to the, the background organization. So you can um, kind of have that it'll all be okay mindset mm. when you know that you've got some, like, I'm definitely a proponent for just automate it. Like yeah. have a, so I, it's funny now. So I've got uh, accounts for uh, just a few accounts for different things. So one of them in particular is like our rates and our water bills. It goes into one account so that I can pay out of that. It's the weirdest thing. Now I'm like excited to get a rates bill because I know that the money is sitting there in an account ready to go. So that stress is just mm. gone away where that's a big bill to come in quarterly mm. or monthly or whenever, but to have that. So I definitely think that, if you get some of those systems in place, then it can help with that. And that's mm. 
all I'm trying to do with the kids, really, with Olive, is to to teach her that that it is um, that it's so it's second nature to her, mm. so that she doesn't have to think about it in the future. And, and I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if her little exuberant personality is going to track the same organised way that mine does. But if I can try and with real consistency of effort get it get her to a place where that's just what we do yeah then hopefully she'll be in a better space than than I was as a young person Emma thank you so much for coming on um I yeah I can't believe that there's a next generation of little curve investors (laughs) like the fact that it's helping our generation obviously a lot of us missed out on financial education and and that's been really like particularly for me, like so problematic. But the fact that the curve is helping you and now also your daughter, like that is the most humbling, amazing thing ever. So thank you so much for emailing us and um, coming on the podcast. Thank you, ladies, for what you do because, uh, honestly, I would have just told her to spend it all if I didn't know about (laughs) the kind of things that you guys were talking about. So so thank you for that that kind of knowledge. Thank you. (laughs) What a great conversation. And also, um, yeah, it's also so good. It's great timing because our Money Reset course is um, is starting in a few weeks. So, like, the fact that you've done it it is also amazing. Mm. Oh, my God, can we get a plug? Like, (gasps) what? how did you find it? It was – okay, firstly, it made me think about how I – think about money, how I use money, the feelings that money gives me, I guess, and and why that is and where that came from. And then how I can put steps in place to make sure that I either catch myself or that I'm at least aware of what's going in and what's coming, you know, what's coming in, what's going out and um, put some plans in place to kind of maximise the, the ins and mm. reduce some of the outs but it's not about and I, I really think that you said it well when you talk about it's not about reducing your spend reducing your mm. spend reducing your spend you can only reduce your spend so much especially when you've got kids so it's also about thinking about the other end of the equation hey what can I look around this playroom right now and sell that my kid's not using anymore that um, I could, you know, we could purchase something else. Um, Mm, Love that. How could I set up a little side hustle? Always had side hustles going when the kids were, I was on maternity leave. So um, it's thinking about both sides of the equation. And Mm. um, I found that the Money Reset course really had everything in one place, was super easy to follow and interesting, like listening to your podcast, super easy listen. So the lessons on Money Reset were the same, super easy. Easy to listen oh my god! To. It oh. sounds like we paid you. I know we haven't. We definitely haven't. <laughs> not paid. Not paid. <laughs> and this Thank isn't, you so this isn't much, sponsored Emma. by um, Squishmallows either. This podcast. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 Oh, She's just was, an avid fan. Yeah. Yeah. It was so fun. I feel like we almost need to get a Squishmallow or something for the office fix. Like, yeah. Just as like a token. Oh, they're of, great like, stress relief. I oh, tell you. Okay. They're they're good we probably really need some of those. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so um, much, Emma. Emma. Have the best rest of your cool. Friday night. Yeah. Thank you for taking it, like, to speak to us. And um, thanks, we'll ladies. hopefully talk to you soon. Fab. Thank you. Take care. Bye.